Ladies and gentlemen, so great to be here at the world famous art like Cinerama Dome packed house. That is how we roll in Hollywood. What did you think of Honey Boy? Please welcome to the stage here, co star Byron Bowers.
share a lot of uh, character traits and similarities and bold and passionate about this thing. And she, to be honest with more than she might direct, she cheerleaded me back to health and I was a really close call with my mother for this. And uh, even before it was a, a movie, she was sort of my proxy sponsor in a weird way of giving me hope, you know, keeping my, my, my motor revved up. Um, and then by the time we got to set, you know, in the yard, we were so locked in at that point. She was man the crew of you know, uh, 40 people. So we would have our talks, but it was, you know, we're almost like speaking in silence in a way. But uh, we had a whole lot of time beforehand, a lot of, a lot of talk and communication beforehand. So we were pretty locked in and it allowed her to sort of pull up with everybody else to give everybody else more attention because they needed it at that point. You know, Lucas and Earl. She was like a mom to us and Saul, but you know, like a mom who's your age, which is a true. <laughs> <laughs> What's, What's your take, take on that? Your, your, your husband's relationship um, helped you for. What? How the, your relationship helped you for your first feature film? Um, yeah, I don't know. China's just like such a, a good instigator of uh, everything, really. But um, I think we just share a lot of. Uh, sensibilities that I feel like just almost was raised um, to understand him uh, in many ways. Um, there's uh, so many similarities about, uh, you know, like I guess if you go into like the whole idea of being an adult child of an alcoholic, which I am too, it, it, it definitely tries you to understand certain and to want to take care of them uh, for better or worse. And I've been just very, in a way, fortunate that I've found ways to take that tendency and turn it into art together, which I have to do. Why was this the right time for you to write this? Like, what was the, the moment of clarity, the epiphany you had? I, I got I to do this, and I got to do it in this way. Well, I was pretty much okay. I went into this rehab center thing. I was just much older, and I was, uh, I was going to be an actor no more. I was going to be sure I was going to be rehab facility. I was going to be the judge and release me. I had a direct fire. We found that shit was really dark. And nobody was really trying to talk to me, including my, uh, through my mother. I had no time. I was like, nobody was trying to talk to me. And uh, uh, really, I was just trying to connect. I was desperate. Extremely, um, you know, just kind of entering the 
gates of trauma <laughs> together <laughs> with people and we're creating things that uh, were extremely painful for this book to try to, to do, but also for us yeah. to watch. Um, and yeah, I think that uh, I think that like this whole film kind of when look, looking back at it, there were just so many ups and downs and so many things that I've learned from making it, both about myself and about Chaya and about what is PTSD and what does it mean to, to walk through it when, when somebody is triggered and a lot of things like that that kind of give you perspective on, on the process and on what Chaya has been going through and I think a lot of it is is in the film, you know, this kind of idea of somebody using their trauma um, over the years to make, you know, to, to perform. And, and this idea of performing constantly in the context of pain and how to get past that and find new tools to, to, to make art or to make films, not just by hurting yourself. <coughs> and I think that I'm looking forward to learning to talk. <laughs> you know, the, the Scenes with Lucas Hedges, uh, it, you know, the film's not linear in the sense that it goes back and forth time and everything, but it, but that's like basically a, a third act, and your scenes with Lucas Hedges are superb. What was it like working with him? Oh, he was amazing, man. Um, he's he's been on my set of comedy shows before, uh, so he already had my sense of humor down, and he enjoyed it. Uh, if not, he's a better actor than I thought he was. <laughs> Uh, but I knew that I would be able to connect with him and uh, help him tell the story. And that, that's what it was about to me, you know what I mean? Just, I could look in his eyes and, and see who he was through his character and connect with that, um, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's beautiful and it's easy for me to do. But yeah. It's simplified, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, sleeping was hard. Sleeping was hard. So. <laughs> All right, okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to give a big round of applause for Noah Jude. Yeah. Woo! And I'm on the heels of working with Zach Gotts again in The Peanut Butter Falcon and the Shy of Nana So, what was it like working with him? How, what surprised you about him and how he was able to hold his own with you? I mean, talk about this guy. Oh, he's a, he was never like a kid to me. He was always an evil. He was just a, a incredible man. I think he could be treated like an evil, talking to him like an evil. He liked that. He liked the idea that he wasn't going to talk to him like a kid. I think his position for him to talk to him like a kid. Just so, like, I was being really open with him. What me and my dad had was never like adult kid anyway. So I was talking about everything. We were talking to each other like two adults or two kids. I don't know what they were. And he pushed me. He pushed me to really listen to him. He pushed me to 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 yeah, we just trust each other deeply and we're totally open to one another and we know everything about each other, everything, everything, everything. Um, everything. And, uh, and we just got very close very, very, very quickly and we had the time, we had no prep time, we had shooting time. And he's just a great fucker. He's so good, man. He's just so great and so honest um, and beautiful. That has such an amazing support system. Family, you know, I was like, we're like, let's make sure we're not making Honey Boy too. Have a running meta exercise and come back here in ten years and do a film about no jukes. So uh, I would make sure that this kid is safe and happy and knows what's up and uh, can tell if something's not comfortable. And like, they're mom and just them spending too much time together. Two months ago, I didn't know him. His mom was living in his house. He was living in a motel. And Lucas was walking around wearing all his clothes. So it was just like, I'm not, you know, this like two months of, of just really diving in and everybody kind of knowing each other so well. And Noah's mom was just such a great partner to us, I think. It was 
just yeah. made us feel really um, just that we can talk about anything and always have some insight into what he's going through, even if it's stuff that he can't say, just like his behavior and his moods and everything, and just keep it in check. And it was really cool to have her. She was, she was just like almost like a creative partner, not just like a cliche stage mom of sorts. She was just like really with us. You know, Byron, you, when you're, you're filming your scenes with Lucas, you know, they're separate from the, the rest of the narrative. But when you see the film, and you see how it's cut together, and you saw the movie for the first time, complete, and you're watching, you know, you all know this, and you know this that your character, you know, is with. What was it like for you to see the whole film together like that? Um, it was amazing. Um, I, it's always, Tricky to see what they kept, so it was a it was a pleasure and pain with that. Cause I knitted, I took knitting classes. <laughs> I took knitting classes, and that was in the film. And I'm like, man, I'm a real nigga. What the fuck I'm doing here? Taking knitting classes for? You know, this nerdy chick sitting beside me and stuff, but she taught me a skill that I could take with me forever <laughs> when I go to real jail one day. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, the lines they kept blew me away, you know what I mean? So they kept a lot of my stuff uh, that I created myself. And then, um, you know, and then the layers of the film seeing James and Otis and the emotion that I went to because I saw it the first time in Sundance in the big theater with 1,500 people. And yeah, and watching, yeah, watching the crowd go through that was such a beautiful uh, thing for a creator because that's how you want your art, or that's how I would want, want my art to touch people. I wanted them to tear up, I wanted them to laugh, I wanted them to reflect on their own life. So, I mean, they did it. And I was back before that. You know, your art, you want your art to touch people. This movie has touched people, but Shy, obviously, this movie has had a big impact on you. How did the making of this movie get you over a hurdle? Oh, well, I wasn't really fucking with my dad at all. You know, I hadn't talked to him in seven years, so I said, that's the biggest gift out of it. We've got a relationship with him, and I'm stuck, and I probably wouldn't have reached out to him unless it was driven by creativity. It's just how I built it. My, my creative life wasn't aligned. We would have died and never talked to each other again, probably. Uh, but I'm stubborn, and he is too. That's just how we go. Um, so, in a weird way, this, even though my priority wasn't to build a relationship with my father, it's been the nicest review of you know, that I've ever had. Um, and uh, yeah, like he did an interview today, it's like so, it's so cool. He's getting a little bit of shine, you know, my dad, that's all he ever wanted. It was like, he's a peacock, he just wants to spread his feathers. So, <laughs> so this is wonderful that way. Um, also, a new way of working, me and my actors, like, like uh, Lucas and Owen, to see how they work and where they pull their creativity from. I was doing this, like, weird 70s meta actor bullshit that wasn't serving me, it was probably like an enemy. And, um, but I was coming out of, like, plastic transformers type shit trying to, you know, ground myself and anchor myself to some kind of truth that I was reading all these weird stories. And then you get around this younger generation and you see like, you can be just as honest and just as true and have technique also. So I'm learning how to work differently. I'm starting to create with the best friends, which feels like something completely new to me and uh, super fulfilling. And the trust that we all have, I've never had with any other filmmaker. She's the best filmmaker in the world. So being able to have somebody in your corner like that, um, you know, have guys like Byron come in and rewrite some of these scenes and like, you know, add. Everybody came and added. Nobody took anything. And everything it just got better and better with everybody who showed up. So now I mean, you're looking like like something really special. But like, really, my shit wasn't as good as what you just saw. You know, this is a team effort. This shit got better and better with everybody who showed up. So I'm just I'm super flattered and great. Okay, so, so three quick things, ladies and gentlemen. First, you can stay seated uh, while we vote, because we gotta go to a, a, a theater. First, but second thing, Shia, so Honey Boy is at 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, right. Also, also, 
peanut butter falcon has made more than $20 million in the United States, the highest grossing independent movie of 2019. Bravo. Bravo. And finally, now that you have seen Honey Boy, please make sure you go on all of your social media. Go on Instagram, go on Facebook, go on Twitter. Even you in the back if you're still on MySpace, totally fine. Spread the word about Honey Boy. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Yes.